So, Nuria, Pakistan's Lahore High Court Bar Association, in their press release, they said something damning. According to this press release, the Federal Intelligence Agency of Pakistan have identified not 1,000, not 2,000, but 400,000 accounts of Pakistanis who are blaspheming against the holy figures of Islam, the Quran, and the Prophet Muhammad in the worst possible manner. You would forget about that Rasmussen Paludan guy. You would forget about Charlie Hebdo. You would forget about those things. You would forget about whatever the worst blasphemy you've ever seen. People in huge numbers are blaspheming in Pakistan on dark web. That's according to, not a word of mouth, but Pakistan's own federal intelligence agency. And they're saying, how come you, out of these 400,000 people, you've only booked 120 or 119 people under the Blasphemy Act? And 11 people have been sentenced to death. Now, there was this news report that came out last year where they were trying to identify which countries produce most Islamophobic tweets. And no surprises there. Again, there's a problem with Islamophobia a bit. That definition is uh, thrown into disarray with this new press release that's come out of Pakistan, what Islamophobia actually means. So Muslims are Islamophobic now. So this study that was done last year, they concluded that India is the most Islamophobic tweet producing country then US, then the UK, Canada, Nigeria, which is also a Muslim country, Australia, and then Pakistan, Nuria, Pakistan. So according to this study, Pakistan is the seventh most Islamophobic country. And then obviously UAE is there as well. So, you, <laughs> but the, with the UAE, you could say, okay, there are a lot of Indians there. So maybe they're, you know, they, they, they're spreading this Islamophobia. But Pakistan not, is made up of 96% of Pakistan's population is made up of Muslims. So are they? Islamophobes as well. Now that all makes sense. Pakistan is the seventh most Islamophobic country. Pakistan's own federal intelligence agency has identified 400,000 accounts that are actively blaspheming. Now, how are they blaspheming? First of all, before I actually show you some, um, some videos, which are music to my ears, but before I go there, does that number shock you, Nuria? 400,000 people? That's like point... I know it's only point... 2% of Pakistan's population. But these are not apostate. These are angry ex-Muslims. I've been warning the Pakistani community that there is an angry, angry lot of ex-Muslims coming who are not going to be kind. And we won't be able to control them. And those people are angry. Why they're angry? Because you beat them up. You shove Islam down their throats. You shut down all restaurants. Um, in the month of Ramadan, this this month of blessings turns into a month of curse for these people. They, pe these are young kids of the 21st century. They don't want to fast. They don't believe in your flying donkey stories. They don't, they don't believe in any of that. The more you shove this religion down their throats, the more rebellious they're going to become. And we've seen that in Iran as well. Iran is definitely a bit more hawkish when it comes to enforcing Islamic values on people. And look, Women are burning their hijabs. People are openly rebelling against the Islamic values. They're saying anything but Islam in our government. And I, I always a bit, I was always a bit skeptical towards Pakistan, but I'm shocked to see this number. How do you see this number? Do you is that does, has that come as a surprise to you? Or yeah, I mean, look, it's it's very interesting, like this this whole new development, but. Um... Yeah, I guess, and, and the dark web, in in just my understanding, would be a good place to locate these people because the ones who are blaspheming, quote unquote, on like on a on a more mainstream level, they are the ones that we hear about who are actually, you know, the ones who are languishing in jail, or they're the ones who are having to have you know lawyers defend them almost with the whole nation against them. So yeah, that's a very interesting figure, but it just kind of like the the survey that you pulled up where Pakistan was one of the top countries uh, for Islamophobic tweets. It just goes to show that 
like you said, the, the majority of the population in Pakistan are Muslims, but within the umbrella of Muslim, you've got at least like 10 to 12 different flavors going on within Pakistan. And technically, they are all Islamophobic towards one another. So I'd be a bit wary to say every single one of those is just an angry ex-Muslim per se. I'd like to think some of those are genuine apostates. But again, when you're in a country where being a Dioband versus a Barilvi versus a Salafi versus a mainstream, whatever, Sunni, going to one madrasa versus another is enough to cause friction. I mean, how many of the Islamic leaders or, or imams or whatever you call them there have actually done blasphemy cases against one another? So if you're doing it at the highest level, it's just, uh, you know, it's just it seems like there's a lot of Muslim infighting happening as well, which I think we need to recognize. Yeah, that's a very good point you made, because obviously the the immediate litmus test is if you see a supposed Muslim um, insulting Abu Bakr, Umar and Uthman, then it means they're immediately they're Shias. They're not necessarily ex-Muslims. They just hate those people. And a lot of that is happening as well. So they've identified that as well. Pakistan uh, modified the blasphemy law uh, in uh, at the start of the Shia. Now uh, you could go to prison for up to 10 years and as well as get death sentence, even if you insult the first three caliphs, because she has loved to insult them. Um, so th they just double down on that. So you're right. In these 400,000 accounts, it's possible that a lot of them are these different sects of Muslims. But so, as far as Deobandis and Brailvis are concerned, they won't be blaspheming against, against any as, uh, holy figures. So anyway, just to show you the extent of this uh, whole blasphemy issue in Pakistan. Let me show you this video. So bear with me. लग जाए ये दो तीन लोग नहीं है ये पाकिस्तान में कोई एक दो हजार नहीं है एफआईए साइबर क्राइम की रिपोर्ट के मुताबिक जो मुझे आज दिखाई गई है उसके मुताबिक इनकी तादाद पाकिस्तान में चार लाख है 120 लोग गिरफ्तार हो चुके 11 लोगों को सजाए मौत हो चुकी है हम करें तो करें क्या किस दरवाजे पर दस्तक दें हम यह सवाल करना चाहते क्या हम मुल्क में जलाओ गिराव करें आपके मुल्क में तो हाल यह हो गया है कि दारिया किस्म के लोग we have seen the rise of the these new Muslim apologists uh, in the Pakistani sphere who who see themselves as specialists of countering atheistic principles. Because obviously, as you know, yours truly was the first one in Pakistani sphere in producing content in Urdu, specifically criticizing Islam. And then initially, all these other clerics, clerics like these, they have no arguments. They have no understanding of atheism, let alone them countering atheistic ideas. Now, since then, a lot of other people have started coming forward and they're like, they're, they're supposedly specialized in countering atheistic ideas or atheistic arguments. Um, so they have recognized this problem that this atheism is spreading like wildfire. But as Nuria made a good point, that it, we, we, it'd be premature to say that all of these 400,000 people um, are atheists. But, you know, something is happening. But Harris, also a quick question. Is, th is that true? Are there atheist professors lecturing at some of Pakistan's top universities or nah? Yeah, they are. They, they don't openly call themselves atheists, but they are yeah. accused of atheism. For example, do you remember this story we covered? I think a month ago, there was this uh, professor in Comsas University, which is one of the high-tech uh, universities of Pakistan, where uh, in an English literature class, they asked this question um, of Mark and Julie of incest. They asked this moral question of incest. And uh, that guy, that professor was sacked. He was accused of being um, uh, an agent of the West and liberalism and blah, blah, blah. So we don't know whether he's an atheist or not. But those are kind of questions that you would not see them being asked in a country like Pakistan. That's, so <laughs> so, sad. That's literally such a question I would naturally be expected to be asked at university. I don't like the fact that they've called it. Not in West Pakistan. But, I know that's but, so wild that it's so, it's just the stuff. Oh gosh. Okay. But yeah. Go on, you, yeah. So, so that, that's just one example. There's so many, it, it, it's, it's become common knowledge. I, I'm obviously not there. I haven't been to Pakistan, nor I intend to go there um, because my life expectancy will go down quite <laughs> drastically um 
But a lot of people are complaining that there are a lot of atheistic professors, these students in these high-end, top-end universities. Um, they have, uh, they openly talk about atheism and they openly diss religion and blah, blah, blah. So they're saying that. So, so something must, must have been happening. It's the universities where these things start. It always happens that way. And I've always said it, no society remains static. Either it evolves or it devolves. Something's always changing. Change is the only thing that, Constant. That's interesting as well, as you said. <laughs> Even a scholar of Islam was caught blaspheming. I have people on my Urdu channel call in who say that, oh, they are, they are imams uh, of, of these mosques and... Uh, they've lost their faith, but they don't know what else they can do. So they just keep, they just stay there. They keep doing this. Um, they keep preaching Islam, but they also drop subtle doubts in people's minds on loudspeaker. So, so you know, they're everywhere. I've always believed that they, they, they're going to appear everywhere, as this guy says. I was also just thinking at the rate that blasphemy is happening in Pakistan, it's almost hard not to blaspheme. <laughs> it's harder not to. आज उन्होंने मुझे जो रिपोर्ट दिखाई है उस रिपोर्ट को देखकर मेरे रोंगटे खड़े हो गए ये सब इस मुल्क में हो रहा है ए वालिदैन अपना हक अदा करो बच्चों की निगरानी करो और बच्चों की निगरानी हमने इस तरह से करनी है उस दिन मुफ्ती अबू मोहम्मद साहब ने एक इंस्टॉल दी एप्स मां-बाप निगरानी करें इस वक्त आपके मुल्क को दिस इज टिपिकल एक्सक्यूज दे यूज लाइक ऑल दिस इज foreign conspiracy taba karne ki saazish ki ja rahi hai main sirf isharat an yars kar raha hu faisal qureshi sahab private park par la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah sayyida tayyiba tahira abida zaida zakiya muzakiya hazrat sayyida fatima ka naam likha hua hai isse pehle hum mar kyu nahi gaye ye din dekhne se pehle hame maut kyu nahi aa gayi is waqt ye kaha ja raha hai ki hum 7 april ko pakistan mein tahaffuz hai namo se risalat ka din manane ja rahe mohtaram faisal qureshi sahab ulama रासमुजन <laughs> 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 Paludin or whatever his name is, or Charlie, but even they haven't done anything like that. They're not. They, he's saying that they have identified four hundred thousand accounts which are that are doing blasphemy like this. They're writing the names of Fatima, the daughter of the Prophet, and these other women. This this is why it tells me, like, I mean, even a Sunni Muslim would not do that to Fatima. I know there there's a bulls, there's this clash between how much we need to respect the sahabas or the companions versus the family of the prophet. I understand that, but they don't abuse them though. But these guys are writing their names on their private parts, on their penises. And on and, and it's not only just boys writing that on their penises, it's actually women as well. Not just men, women as well. So um <laughs> just, I, I, I don't know. This is this is next level blasphemy. ये पैगाम जाना चाहिए कि हम में से कोई भी ये चीज बर्दाश्त नहीं कर सकता और हर एक इस बाप में अपना किरदार अदा करे मैं चाहूंगा कि सब खड़े होकर oh yeah. ये है वो इस वक्त oh, let's stand up. ताके कौम तक एक पैगाम पहुंचे नबी आए सलाम की इज्जत और नामूस जगह पे तो ही नहीं सुनी जो ये सारा कुछ देख रहे हैं जिंदगी खराब कर दी गई इस मुल्क का अमन इस मुल्क की तबाही करने के लिए इस हद तक मेरा दुश्मन गिर जाएगा The first guy who was delivering this really fiery speech, uh, I found another video of him 
I have oh, featured him in the past. Be dramatic, but it really was. <laughs> yeah, this, this, it's this guy. L look at his other controversial views. Uh, All the Pakistani, there are a lot of Pakistani people that they have come out in support of these guys. They're like, yeah, 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 no, no, no compromise on on the honor of our sacred personalities. Well, the, these are the kind of views these guys hold. <laughs> کہ باپ کا اختیار کتنا ہوتا ہے ولی کا اختیار کتنا ہوتا ہے یہ آناف کیا ہے کہ باپ تین سال کی بچی چار سال کی بچی دو مہینے کی بچی کا نکاح کر سکتا ہے یہ آناف کیا ہے تین سال کی بچی کا بھی کر سکتا ہے پانچ سال کی بچی کا بھی کر سکتا ہے نابالغ کا نکاح کر سکتا ہے رخصتی نہیں کر سکتا ظاہر ہے وہ تو بلوغت کے بعد ہوگی اور اگر باپ نے نکاح کر دیا تو باپ کے نکاح کو بعد میں بیٹی باطل نہیں قرار دے سکتی سو دیٹ دا کان آف پیپل ہو دس مووی اسٹار از سٹنگ ود اینڈ وین ہی گاٹ کولڈ آؤٹ انسٹیڈ آف اپالوجائزنگ ہی سیٹ آف دیز پیپل اگینسٹ دیز لبرل مسلمس ہو آر سینگ دیٹ ہینگ آن سیکنڈ یو شوڈ ڈو دس دس از ڈاگ وسلنگ وی آلریڈی نو ہاؤ مینی پیپل ہیو ڈائڈ ان ان دس کنٹری ان دا نیم آف بلاس فارمی سو وٹ ہی ڈاز ہی ایون ڈاگ وسلس اور ہی گیٹس ہز گائز ٹو ایون انسینویٹ دیٹ دیز پیپل ہو آر کنڈیمنگ دس ایکٹر آر آلسو بلاس فیمس واچ دس دینا چاہتے ہیں کہ جو لوگ اس وقت فیصل صاحب کے ساتھ فیصل قریشی کے خلاف لگے ہوئے ہیں انہی کو پہچانے ان کا لینکے ان لوگوں کے ساتھ کہ جو لوگ یہ مکرو دھندا اور یہ جو ملک کے اندر یہ خرابی کا باعث بن رہا ہے ان کو پہچانے ان کے اکاؤنٹس کو چیک کریں ان کا تعلق نکلے گا ان بلاسمرز کے ساتھ کہ جو لوگ یہ کر رہے ہیں وغیرہ بھائی ہم چور کو چور کہہ رہے ہیں ہم گندے کو گندا کہہ رہے ہیں اس میں ہم نے کون سی غلط بات کی ہے اور چور کو چور کہنے پر اگر کوئی شور کر رہے تو سمجھ رہے ہیں کہ جناب والے یہ بھی چور کر بٹ اگین ما پوائنٹ از دس ناتھنگ دین کین ڈو ناؤ دس The, the, the people openly descending we've seen that in in iran and now i'm more hopeful than ever that there, there's going to be these these 400,000 people are going to turn into four million within five years if not more because i've always said it any change is only one generation away this is bound to happen the more you shove this religion down the throats of these people who are born, these kids who are born in the 21st century, they're not going to buy your, oh, Muhammad flew to heaven on a winged donkey, or oh, it's appropriate to marry, um, for a 52-year-old guy to marry a nine-year-old child, or sucking the tongue of a boy. They're not going to buy that. They're not going to look, no, no, it's done, it's over. The, the age of Islam is over. And for For the last 1400 years, the reason why Islam flourished, or seemingly flourished, was because you, you kept killing apostates. You can't do that anymore. It's not going to happen. These 400,000 people, you know, out of these 400,000 people, Pakistan, the, the Pakistani authorities have only charged 119 people. That tells you a lot. that They are helpless. Pakistanis are so incompetent in everything that... They can't even be a good police state. You know? They can't even do these brutal crackdowns properly. They can't. They're not going to charge 400,000 people. They've identified 400,000 people, or accounts at least. Let's just say out of 400,000 accounts, they're being run by 100,000 people. Let's just say 100,000 people. So they're not going to be able to put them all in prison. They're not going to be able to, avoid, to give death sentences to these 100,000 people. They can't do that because... The international community is going to go after them. This country is already dying economically, politically. There's political instability. They can't do this. So there's only one way out. Adopt these modern, progressive, humanistic, liberal, secular values. Except for people who they are. Look at, look at the West. Nobody kills an ex-Christian. Therefore, people... Don't feel the need to blaspheme against Mother Mary or Jesus Christ. Some, or some people just do it to, make, to prove a point. But there is no urgency. There's no need to just be, to be defecating on the Bible. There's no need. There's no, there's no, there are no angry ex-Christians. Yes, there was this phase of anti-theists or angry um, atheists, you could say. But that's fizzled out as well. Because ex-Christians are not being murdered. Christianity is not being shoved down the throats of these people. 
That's the reason why they say, oh, Muhammad is the most loved person on the planet. Let me break it to you. Muhammad is also the most ridiculed person in the world. They say most amount of books and documentaries have been made on Adolf Hitler. That might be true because he's the, you know, he's perceived to be the biggest monster of the 20th century. Um, even though I think Stalin was bigger than that. But at least these people who are writing books on Adolf Hitler, they're doing that. Um, they're, they're analyzing him academically. Muhammad is not only just being rebuffed academically, but he's also being mocked at. The reason for that is because you kill apostates. You say you cannot criticize Muhammad. They say you can't even criticize Muhammad academically. Let me play this video. Jesus Nabi Alayhi Salatu Salam ki zate wala sifat par kisi kisam ka koi ayeb, koi naqs, koi tanz, koi tanqeed kare, to shariyat islamiyah ne unki saza mukarar kiya ke aise log wajibul qatl hai. Quran is par kisi kisam ki muafi koi bhi shaks nahi de sakta. Defecating on the Quran or writing the names of these holy figures on your, on your private parts. Okay, that's next level. But it's not like that. Okay, fine. That's just too much. But you don't even allow normal criticism of Muhammad. You don't even allow dissent. You don't even allow people to say, okay, you know what? To you is your religion. To me is my lack of religion. You don't even allow that. In Pakistan, if you convert from any other religion to Islam, you can do it. No problems. No questions asked. But if you are a Muslim and you change to any other religion or, or you leave religion altogether, you have to appear in court. And you know what's going to happen? They're going to ask you, so why did you leave Islam? I'm sorry, I wasn't convinced um, by Prophet Muhammad's action of marrying a little child or, or asking kids to suck his tongue. Blasphemy, put him in prison. That, so that's why nobody goes there. No one is going to register himself as an atheist in Pakistan. That's the reason. So that's the hypocrisy of these people. And fortunately, people can see outside of Pakistan. You cannot keep these cultures isolated from the rest of the world anymore. As long as you have the internet, you're going to have people dissenting. People are going to dissent. People are going to identify these problems. They're going to see these issues within their own culture. And they're going to say, hang on a second, that's not right. And so when liberals of Pakistan, which is a rare commodity, and people like us, when we started criticizing uh, this TV network, this uh, this movie star, that what are you doing? You're doing this on Prime on, on prime time on prime TV, um, or on national TV, what, what, are you, what are you doing? They said, no, 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 no. We're only talking about everything according to the law. We're not promoting vigilante action. But look at this. They were eulogizing this. They were singing these hymns on national TV, prime time. Look at this. <laughs> Basically, this is what they're doing. Um, I tweeted about this, and, and thankfully, a lot of people responded to that tweet. Um, I got a lot of engagement. Uh, the Print, which is a major left-leaning liberal um, uh, news publication um, organization in India, they covered that news story. Uh, they responded to this tweet of mine. Um, and I am expressing my deep concerns, I feel that the government of Pakistan is going to initiate a brutal crackdown on these political dissidents. And what breaks my heart is that these are just children, in, well, maybe not in the eyes of the law, but, but they could be children. They could be 16, 17, young adults, 18, 19 year old, boys and girls who are just sick of this religiously suffocating environment. Um, and Pakistan government is going to initiate this crackdown. They can't charge all of these 100,000, 200,000, or 400,000, however many people there are. They can't charge 
than with blasphemy, because obviously that would be registered. But we have had stories of people who have been sodomized, tortured in captivity um, during interrogations of uh, when when FIA and when these people arrest these accused. And so I'm worried about that. That's going to happen. So please follow us on Twitter. Um, tag the U.S. Embassy in Islamabad, U.K. High Commission in Islamabad, EU Commission, other human rights organizations, the United Nations. You need to tag them. You need to send emails to them. And you need to tell them, you need to urge them to keep an eye on the Pakistani government because um, these people, I'm, I'm, I'm worried, I'm genuinely worried that Pakistan is going to initiate a brutal crackdown. They're not going to, Islam is not the beast that just takes it lying down. It just doesn't roll over and die. It, it, it fights back. To help me produce more videos like these, support me on Patreon or PayPal. 